how's everything going for you this morning before we jump in? Good. I'm, uh, I can show you what I'm doing. Okay. This, this is like a file of four days of rehearsal nice. with the band in Cambridge. Yeah. yeah. And I've just gone through and like highlighted anything useful. Mm -hmm. So it's freaking taking me so long to do it. How long I is mean, the length of that session? Uh, so this long one over here, this yeah. top one, uh -huh. is three and a half hours. Good grief. Fun time. I know. Oh, my God. But I mean, I'm almost there. I've got like two more, two more tracks to go. Awesome. Because we're starting again in two weeks, and, and I've never sent them like, you know, my job was to like, hey, figure <laughs> out, you know, go through, go through those things and figure out what's good. Oh, you got to the mining job. That was your role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, was that a role that you signed up for? Or was that just what it was given to you? Um, or you pioneered I, it because you wanted it, right? It's a role I want. Yeah. I do I the same wanna, thing when I, I record with people. It. They're always yeah. surprised. Like, why are you recording all of this? I'm like, just in case, man. Just in case. Well, right. And this is just sometimes. It was just like when it was like, maybe we're on to something. Because we... We all, I'm not blaming everybody else, but I, I'm kind of the same. Like <laughs> everybody in the band has a pretty poor memory of like sure. what's going on. <laughs> you know, parts just like, whoop. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I know when I'm writing, if I don't finish it in the day, at least finish a concept of it, I won't remember the mindset I was in. Oh, no way. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Danny Hogger here in California and Coast to Coast Conversation. If Green Day guided me through the basket case years of teenage until I came around to the ever motion of Guster in my 20s, helping me keep it together, then not a surf has been rushing at me for the last five to 10. And thanks advance for the next five years. Matthew Cause is my guest this morning. Hello, Matthew. Hey there, Danny. Right on. Believe it or not, I, that was a shortened version of the intro I wrote getting ready this morning, <laughs> but uh, it got to be a runaway train when I got to Soul Asylum, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm super yeah appreciative that you would take the time to join me like really I, I know i came to your music late i saw you open uh, as one of the middle bands for guster in berkeley back years ago and i was sitting in a spot in the auditorium that didn't have a particularly great mix and i i was enjoying your set and you slowed down and played uh, inside of love and at that moment I'm like oh yeah. i see what they're doing i i hear it now it was like right. it was crystal in that moment and i'm like well i got to dive deeper into these guys because that was a really eye opening moment for me i hadn't been exposed yet your music right. library is awesome man you you have an amazing body of work and i want to thank you for all the inspiration you've given me and for the time this morning oh man that's all very very kind thank you so much i'm well, so glad i know that feeling in listening to something when when you connect I mean, I'm so I'm grateful that you, that happened to you with us, um, and I'm grateful for all the times that's happened to me with so many bands that I'm listening to, and then all, it just comes into focus. Yeah, so great. <laughs> if that moment has happened multiple times for you, who are some of the artists through the years that have done that for you, who have carried you through particular moments or or eras? Oh, I mean, so many. I guess I guess then I would just be reaching in my mind. You know, the first four Echo and the Bunnymen records. Um, all the early REM records, a lot of like the post-punk stuff, like New Order and Joy Division, things like that. Pavement, Sonic Cues. And then, you know, I hate using French words because I am I speak it, so, it, <laughs> so I feel embarrassed correct, pronouncing things correctly because it sounds so pretentious. But, <laughs> but all the auteurs, <laughs> auteurs, you know, Leonard Cohen and, and uh, Neil Young and Bob Dylan and people like that, you just... Mm -hmm just know it right away like i remember with with dylan and in bringing those up let me just say that i don't consider us in the same on the same planet so i'm not i'm not drawing any parallels but um i remember parking a van i had this van for the band i was in before this one and uh it was in the 80s and there was a lot new york was a boom town then so a lot of people had cars and parking was really difficult, and I used to have to drive around for ages. And I remember one night, the Dylan song "Desolation Row" came on the radio, and I was—I'd heard him a lot, but I'd never really, really connected. And I was struck by the song, and I was sitting there, and it was cold in the van. I turned it off, and I had to go. But I thought, oh, I'll just wait till the end. It'll only be like three minutes. This song's great—four <laughs> minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, <laughs> eight minutes. You know, and that just like. That really locked it in. Um, oh, I don't know. Looking through my records, I like a lot of stuff. I mean, we're probably the same. You know, I think a lot of people that like pop music and rock music and all that, you know, a lot of us connect to the same stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when you 
are in the mood uh, to listen to good music and, and you do, and you, then you are struck to, to motivate and pick up your guitar, what are the kinds of impetus for, for those moments for you? Is it every, can it come randomly or, or do you find yourself, uh, um, you know, drawn at particular times of the day or things you think about and then oh. you're like, oh, wow. What is it for you? What's your process? Well, um, sometimes like this morning I went to get coffee and it's cold right now, but it was a really bright morning and I was, I had, I was listening to me, to Spotify or whatever. And, and I was feeling kind of not bored, but you know, I didn't know what to listen to. And so I went to like the current pop list or something and then and then that made me curious i'm like who are who are the pop people i haven't listened to that i'm always curious about one of them is sia sia mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so i put on something by her and then i just wanted to come home and like figure out how to do that <laughs> you know which i didn't do i tried for like an hour <laughs> i was like putting up i was like listening to little snatches of like pink and Katy perry and things like that mm -hmm. i'm really curious about um modern pop i don't know a lot about it but when I hear something good, I'm really fascinated by how spare it is. You sure. know how like yeah, I do indie, indie rock and power pop, which I totally love and is like in my blood. You know, it's really dense music, and and so when you hear something like you know, obviously like Lord or something, that first single Royals. You know, when you hear something so empty, mm -hmm. I'm really I'm totally fascinated by that, and I keep in a way trying to do it limited success but it's really interesting to to try you know yeah anyway I, I i really respect things that that have a lot of atmosphere with spare elements i find it challenging trying to create it as well so i do a free song a week at danny hogger podcast i just released a new album two sides about this week and i i pick the best songs wow. of the weeks and i develop them in december when i have the christmas break from teaching and i put them out in january um, and I always find it difficult to leave it alone. Um, I start yeah. with something acoustic and put a, a little melody or this, this year yeah. I, I did some work with the dulcimer for a little while and, oh, and yeah. it sounds good in a sparse way. And I, I often will have a early stage working song downstairs and I'll go upstairs to record it. And my wife will say something like, Oh, you added, <laughs> you, know, you, uh, you, interesting. Uh, you put in more like it's difficult for me to yeah. leave it but i do find there's power to that sparseness to the openness to the rest and to letting the instrument speak on its own too without needing to accent it in every uh totally i know exactly what you mean i know what you mean and i i wonder if also part of it is um like one thing that i'm so drawn to and uh i hate I don't mean to categorize everything, but you know, in, in the kind of music that I make or that maybe that you make now, I'm curious to hear your new, your new record. That's awesome. Uh, let's, get, let's come back to that. I'm really fascinated by the, sure. by, by the number of songs a week thing. I, I keep being tempted to try and then I just, I get shy about it or scared, you know, but um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. The, there's so much abstractness in a lot of um, power pop kind of music. There's a lot of just like, an oblique feeling and and you know like one of the definitions of country music is that it um is clear and there's a storyline and it's okay. just the intention is very clear and i really like oblique kind of feeling music you know just i feel sideways today you know image 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 <laughs> i don't know sometimes i don't know i can't figure it out but Maybe I figured it out. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I do. there's this just amorphous kind of. Um, it's not random, but it's a, but it's a thing, and I love it. And again, like I live there, but I really admire songs that have a, the, every line is crystal clear. You know, and and I guess the thing is that now that I'm older, I've spent so much time in vague abstract land lyrically even though I, I i know i have some songs that are that are clear but that may be by accident or by luck you know i don't know but a lot of them are just like i've just got these feelings that i hmm. sort of understand and sort of don't but as i get older i get more curious about being clear in the same way that like when you start drinking whiskey isn't the first thing right <laughs> that's an adult taste <laughs> yeah. um so you're like, 
beer. That makes sense. Oh, screwdriver. It's like orange juice, but with a kick. And, you know, like I think as a teenager, it's like Tom Collins. It's kind of sweet. You know, you kind of graduate to, to these other things. I think partially because as the years go by, you're like, huh, I need a new taste. What's this whiskey stuff? Oh, yeah. I would have thought mm -hmm. this was so weird when I was younger, but I like it. You know, um, not promoting drinking. I hardly drink myself, but Same. just just saying like these new, <laughs> new tastes and stuff. And so no, I, I, I think it, it. I think it has to do with that, and also trying not to shy away from this scary thought that I have sometimes, which is like, do I have any stories? Do I have anything to like? Do I force myself to? Do yeah. I have anything to say? Like, and lately I'm. You know, there's like a write what you know, like what's really on your mind and what, what's been on my mind the last two years, like a lot of people is, is what's going on politically and sociologically in, in the States. And that is so big and so disturbing that it is incredibly hard to write about. Hmm. It's just super hard. Um, partially because I'm not interested in angry songs. Um, I mean, I'm interested in other people's angry songs. I'm not interested in writing Same here. angry songs because I like getting through to people. And and in the current atmosphere, anger doesn't do anything. And it's I so mean, easy to come by, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And it's everywhere. And it's part of the problem. But it's not going to move the football. It's not going to pull anyone over. It's not going to... You're not going to yell at someone and have them be like, you know what? That thing you're yelling at me about? I'm going to think about it. No, they're not going to think about it. So, so there's this, so it seems like a measured way of talking would be really good right now, but, but to be measured, you sort of have to be clear and understand what you're talking about. And, and I'm so bemused, you know, so confused and surprised and, and made and saddened by the way things are now that, that I'm having trouble. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. I'm just like talking about writing again. I like it. Sure. It's very helpful yeah. actually in hearing some of your thought process. process. Yeah. Uh, with, um, you know, as a teacher you're presenting and trying to keep yourself out of it is very challenging. Right. I bet. What um, do you teach? I teach U.S. history and econ gov oh, for 11th good. and 12th graders. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. So, well. so, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult. Like when you start day one of government class yesterday and it's day 17 of government shutdown, you know, and how can you right. present without in injecting and without a, uh, trying to impose, you know, yeah. meanwhile, I, I super appreciate the, the positivity of what you're doing. I, I feel the same way as well. There's, there's plenty of negative being created, but I, my philosophy in the classroom and in the music is, um, you know, here I am as a person, I'm going to be vulnerable with you. I'm going to tell you I've got plenty of blind spots and things I don't understand. And I'm going to learn right. along with you and we're going to learn together. I'm going to experience this together. And meanwhile, if the world worked more like this classroom where we listen to each other's thoughts, disagree respectfully, share all of our cultural histories and see how much we have uh, both different and in common that are wonderful, then we can go together yeah. and do like amazing things. So the, it's, it's huge and it's the only way I can go forward. And also having fun and laughing and, and making fun of myself is, is, is big. I, I don't know how else we could do any kind of meaningful work in life if we're not enjoying and, and being ourselves. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. That's true. And have you written a song called Blind Spot? Have I? I have yeah. not. No. We should. Okay. <laughs> one, of, okay. one of us should. Maybe right. we both should. <laughs> oh, I'm down for a collaboration. If I could kick you into the song a week and take credit for getting you into that, that'd be the accomplishment of the decade. I mean, that would... Oh, my God. But you know well, what? I I'm definitely curious about it. But yeah, everything was, you're saying, I agree. Yeah. I, I was surprised that you said it's hard for you to write simplest, like write in simplicity. I find it hard to write in images. And whenever I do, I celebrate a little like high five to myself. Like uh, the other day, I was finishing up Crest, and it's one of the songs on the album. And it. I came up with this this idea. Kind of the chord progression kind of sounded like waves coming over, and I, yeah. I thought uh, I'm almost over the crest of this wave, but in full disclosure, I'm floating away. Meaning, like I feel like I'm really killing it in all the things that I'm doing. It's not what I thought I would be doing, and I'm much further away from what I imagined I would do when I was younger. But I'm really yeah. proud of myself for staying on top and doing so many things at once. Uh, and so that was right. kind of like, I was like, wow, an image came out. But most of the time I find it's very clear cut and like, here I am and this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm thinking. Oh, I see. I and see. I find yeah, it harder yeah, yeah. To, to come up with really creative imagery. I guess I don't think in it because I always speak out loud and I speak to try to be as clear and explicit as I can. But right. it's, I hear you say that it's a, it's a, you usually 
images pour out and I find that kind of inspiring too. Right. Yeah. Well, great, great. I, I, as you were saying that I was wishing that I had some, some advice about how to get in that mind space. I don't know. It's sort of like, it's maybe it's some kind of like looking for metaphors and everything. Like if you think of everything as representing something else. Yeah. Like, right now there's enormous cloud cover coming and I me mean, it's like a mountain moving you know mm-hmm. and then well it's like a mountain moving you know <laughs> it it's right like <laughs> you, right right in a way you know like if you look at anything and be like what is it like what is that like yeah you know if you're pouring a glass of water for something to be somewhere it has to leave somewhere else or or more the you know, something has to sink for something to rise or whatever, you know, it just, just putting a filter of meaning over anything you're looking at, like a, like a, like a meaning translator in a way, you know? Um, Well, I was going to say what the challenge I have about being clear is that sometimes it exposes things I don't want to be, exposed mm-hmm. nothing particularly embarrassing is but but like for example like my total biggest lifelong struggle number one for sure is i don't know if i'm diagnosed but some kind of add ishness some kind of it's hard for me to stay on a task and the reason that's the biggest struggle in my life is because in a lot of ways i know i love work more than the only thing, the thing that makes me absolutely happiest is, is like doing something, making something, working on something, and whether it's like helping somebody else, yeah, or whatever it is. Like my work ethic is super high, <laughs> but love it. My, but oh, in fact, uh, my work effectiveness is pretty shy of the level it should be at, considering how much I think about it all the time. Like, yeah, you know. Like, my parents are both writers and they've, they've both produced a lot and, and, and just, I just find it noble to, to put yourself to a task and make things. And, you know, that's, what's incredible about humans, but I'm like daydreaming 98% of the time and it sucks. But it Maybe. doesn't, it doesn't come through though, you know, because I look at you as a bastion of quality and I look at me as a bastion of quantity and it's not by intention. Like I'm not always thinking, well, I'll do this right. inspiring teachers podcast. I'll create the largest archive of teacher interviews of this good feeling and wisdom and appreciation. Right. Of but in my own music, I, I find it hard to dedicate, and maybe this is similar to what you have. I find it hard to dedicate a project all the way through until I know there's no flaws. Instead, embracing that there's going to be flaws and at the level yeah. of production that I can afford and I can do it by myself, you know, I'm only going to be able to reach this part and then I seem to start over again instead of maybe pushing boundaries towards a higher level. You know, I, I, I maybe sort towards other projects because the quantity of, of work is so high. I wonder if it's similar for you because since you said you're always producing, I'm always making on creating but i think i want to be more like you where what i'm making is more appreciated by more people but i i haven't really figured out where that is and how to do that and, and being solo with that i find that to be a challenge not a, not to make right. excuses no, but no, 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 i'm the no. only one pushing my own back if, if that right I, I know what you mean yeah uh, let me just to clarify i'm not always producing that's the problem okay i'm always thinking about it or trying to and going up into my little office room right here and like but I'm goofing off most of the time. So, that, so anyway, what I was gonna say is that when I really talk clearly, very often the clearest, closest place is to go to what, what is in the forefront of my mind and what I'm really thinking. And what that's been for 30 years is like, ah, shit, I only did this for 40 minutes today and I, I want to do that for three. And it's like, I don't, I've reached a point where I've got a bunch of songs that are about missing the mark or falling short of where you want to be, who mm. you want to be and all yeah. that. And, and I've reached a point where I kind of don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> but, yeah. but you still write them. Cause I feel yeah. like most of my songs come from like the yeah. voice is almost insecure and they write themselves. You know, I get started and they go, I'm like, why did I get on this theme again? Right. Uh, right. Right. Well, there's that. Yeah. You're like, I, I've got, I have asked myself that same question a lot. Like this theme again. Oh my God. <laughs> so anyway so yeah <laughs> these are definitely challenges i mean I, I like uh uh i just do you follow an instagram um 
account called the Nitch N I T C H. No. It's just uh, it's cool. It's like it's just things that famous people said. Okay. You know, and and so Hemingway said something like when he when he was afraid of working or thought he wasn't going to be any good, he would really try and calm himself by saying like, I've written before and I will write again. Hmm. Like I can do this. I've done this. I'll do this. Try and write one true sentence. And I've been thinking about, that's the thing I've been carrying lately. It's like when I sit down to do something, I'm like, what's one true, what's the one true thing I'm thinking right now? Hmm. One true sentence. Um, Anyway, that's been a, Maybe like you pick up like a little, it's like picking up diets and putting them down. Like I pick up a motto now and again. Like, oh, okay, that's, that's the phrase that I'm going to turn to mm-hmm. to like pull me out of a fog or a rut or whatever. That's pretty and good. And, that, it's and, then, good. and then there's that other one. Uh, uh, I can't remember who said it, but something like inspiration is for amateurs. And that has to do with, with just sitting down and doing, doing some work. And that's, that's the problem I have is cause I spent a lot of time just like kind of waiting for inspiration. And then I, and I know what I could do is what I've been forcing myself to these last couple of days is like go through all these files and pick the good parts. It's like, there is work to be done Yeah. when you don't have that feeling, that sparky feeling when it's that's not true. there. That's true. And so Nick Cave is really interesting when he talks about that because he goes to his office every day and he sits down and he works and he's like, do I feel like it every day? No, but I do. I sit down and then you're in motion. And then, I mean, this is probably something you don't need to know because you're producing so much, but, but it's true that like, if you're in motion, like, Oh, you know, you're fluid. Like, Oh, I played a bit. I sang a bit. I wrote a bit. I'm like, I'm doing things. I'm trying to go through and edit down. And if, as long as you're moving, then when that spark comes, you're already moving. So you don't have to like, come up from scratch and be like oh shit i gotta open a file i gotta, I gotta yeah. my guitar i should check that where's my guitar you know you know like all that kind of definitely because you can lose as you know i'm sure you know like you can lose that little oh yeah that little feeling can just go in a minute yeah 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 that's that's good you give me a lot to think about here um uh, so you guys are Getting back together, I see the the March sixteenth date in New York at the Beacon yeah. Theater, and you can get tickets at notasurf dot com. Find out the future dates as they come about. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I I was cu- going to go forward, and then I, I stopped, and I was going to think the, the quote that I've I've been going by the last few months is uh, some of my my old boss used to say that if you always do what you always did, you always get what you always got. He right, said that right. every day. I shared an office with him, and every employee that came in, he would say it too. And it's yeah. like, that's going to sink into my memory if you keep saying it over right. and over every day. Right, right, uh, and right, it totally. did. But so that's, that's what I've been trying to do is like, how can I get somewhere new? Um, maybe pushing somewhere different. Uh, wh- could you share with us any of those uh, sentences of truth? Do you have those uh, hanging around that you've been writing out or thinking about? Oh, uh, I was thinking how lucky I was that I grew up between wars. Yes. As a man. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's for sure. I'm, I'm watching that. Ken Burns, Vietnam. Oh, man. Oh, my God. That's some heavy viewing. It is some heavy viewing. And I was just... Something like that. A lucky man. I grew up between wars. And I, I stayed young. I stayed young because I could. You know, Absolutely. I didn't have to grow up at that speed. Yeah, that's just, I was thinking that. And that, of course, maps out or relates to... Um, uh, I think an American problem, which is that we have been so lucky as a country, aside from the Civil War, um, Mm. you know, we've had a pretty good, easy ride. And so I think, I think there's a kind of mindset relatively common in the States that is like history happens to other people or history doesn't even happen. I just don't see how real it is. You know, like, like second amendment fanatics also like militia type people. Like I feel like I, I'm sure any of those guys are like more quote unquote manly than me and would like intimidate me in a second. And then I would flinch and step down. I'm just not a fighter, you know, but on the other hand, I feel like they're kind of playing. Hmm. I feel like it's kind of cops and robbers and cowboys and Indians and just kind of like playing gun. Hmm. You know, 
Whereas in Europe, I feel like on a continent where people have been like murdering each other for forever, mm. um, maybe there's more, maybe more people are more plugged into reality. But I think, it, yeah, I just might, think we're too we're too comfortable. It might be a greater context. I think the comfort has a lot to do with it. I just interviewed. I went through 13 years of Catholic school. The best yeah. religion teacher I ever had was a Jewish rabbi in college, no. and uh, he he told me. Uh, we were talking last week and he's saying, you know, we, we don't learn history so we don't repeat it. We learn history because we do repeat it and because we don't learn from it. And right. I thought that was like really counterintuitive, but very true in that we have to try because we don't learn lessons. And right. I, I thought that was a pretty wise, he was always full of wisdom and I always was. Uh, say that again. We have to, what sure. did you say? We, we have to learn history because we do not learn from it. Right. And uh, it was, it's very good. And, and he, he points out that, it, you know, oftentimes it's very true. And in teaching it, it's my least favorite part of history to teach. And unfortunately, it's such a, a large part of our textbooks and the things that we, that we need to teach. Uh, but it's, it's hard to, to relive it every year. And it, you try to become a better teacher. You try to learn more. And the more you learn, the, yeah, again, I'm not a fighter right. either. So I, I yeah. look at it through this context of like, I'm glad I didn't have to do that. You know, I'm grateful for the people that sacrifice but saddened that by the the few times we learn lessons and we make the same mistakes or like when we fight battles because a message wasn't delivered in time and i think about yeah, all the people yeah. who their whole life is tied up in that message that didn't make it and yeah, i'm so yeah, grateful yeah, yeah. I, I have not been put in a situation like that where you know regardless of how successful my music has been or the things that i'm trying to do or how widespread they are the freedom that which i get to appreciate i never take for granted or at least i don't think i do oh yeah you know sure. i try to try to be appreciative of stuff like that so i I hear what you're saying. Um, but I also think, and, and I, I wonder how responsible this is, you know, that we're, because we are living that comfort here and I'm in California that we don't yeah. have to, I didn't have to experience that, that I can put it aside for most of my life, you know, and I don't know how responsible you feel that is versus like, should we be more engaged in it? And, you know, I'll speak when given the chance to speak, but for the most part, I'm grateful that I've had the chance to live my life and I think I am living it instead of being yeah, disrupted yeah. by everything. But sometimes that's, I feel yeah. like, well, that, that's also not great because then you're allowing things to happen. But I think when you vote and when you're active in that way and you, yeah. you talk to people and you try to give your pers perspective where you can, I wonder where you think yeah. you're in that, in that balance. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any guilt to be felt or had or, or, or given to yourself. I think... Um, you know, if you're if you're voting and if you are a positive, tolerant person, I think I think it's it's enough. I don't think you're obliged. Oh, low power mode, low battery. Oh, we can wrap up. Yeah. yeah, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, uh, oh, I'll have to go. I have to go in like ten minutes anyway. I gotta get my kid. Um, okay. But yeah, I don't think you have any. Uh, yeah, we're not responsible for mistakes that have come before. Um, and you're not obliged to try and change the world either. I think it's all, it's all okay. Um, you know, voting's the minimum though. I think like not, not oh, voting's I, I, wild, irresponsible. I agree. I agree with you. And you know, the way I'm, I'm teaching as well, I feel like is my contribution. I think I'm setting kids up to be the most open-minded, respectful future that I can provide. Yeah. And to me, I think that that's my biggest investment in the future. And it, you know what? It yeah. makes me hopeful. I watch kids come in combative and I watch them leave with a greater understanding and a reasonability to listen as much as they're yeah. willing to talk. And I, I think that, that that I see as kind of my my deal. Yeah, and for, for you, sure. you know, I, I, I can't, well, I, I guess I can because all fans do. But, you know, I, right. I think you do a tremendous service because you, you produce so much love in the world with what you make. And it makes me so incredibly happy that like, oh, I, 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 you borderline between wanting to flatter and just wanting to share my gratitude because right. the bands yeah. that, that are in my, my five or are at constant rotation, you provide so much fuel for me, whether it's in the morning before they come in or, you know, right. I'll spot on a bit of your KEXP or your orchestra performance sometimes when they're writing their journals or something. And I wanted to let you know that because uh, I just think yeah, there's so much yeah. to be gained from it. And a lot of them say, like, who is that? You know, and, and I'll share that with them. And it's been really meaningful to me. And the fact that, like, you take time to do an interview like this, it means a lot to them, to us. And I'm trying to show them they can do whatever they want in their life. They're the only detractors that they have. They're the negative voices that will stop them from doing something. And I'm trying to quiet that voice as much as I can. That's right. That's right. Yeah, totally. And, and I, I think, um, I was thinking this recently that, 
you know, with the way this fake news idea and um, and we're not just reading like three or four newspapers anymore and you, you know, the echo chamber and, and information everywhere and being able to find your, you know, your news source that gives you the slant you want and all that. Right. I've been thinking about how I feel like feelings, uh, feelings aren't facts. I know that's like, <laughs> that's a disturbing uh, trend. Um, <laughs> but, but I think they, 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 we kind of have to hold on to them and hold on to some purity of looking at like ideas as positive or negative because it's with so many more facts available and so many more distorted facts available, it can be really hard to debate somebody. Yes. You take two sure. random people in the world and it's, I'll never keep, but you know, you probably, you know, clearly way more history than I do. Mm. And and a lot of people every day, <laughs> yeah, prob- probably, but well, I'm just saying, like, let's pretend you do. Like, like. We should pretend that I do, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For the people that might watch this, like, right. pretend, pretend that I do. But like, if, if, if I was countering, if, if I had to debate somebody about climate change or something, it was somebody who was armed with a lot of like, well, you know, a lot of data points about why it's not man-made or something like that. You know, if, if, if you're just debating somebody about something, um, I, I, there's hardly anything I could out debate somebody about if they, I couldn't out debate them on facts. I'm sorry, I'm being vague getting to my point. My point is, I feel like, I feel like personally, like focusing on feelings and be like, well, wouldn't it be, you know, are, do you basically love most people or you basically fear most people? Do you basically want to contribute to good or do you basically want to defend your own things? Do you, you you know, like if can't change people's minds about facts, at least I can't that correct. Then, then maybe all I can do is is keep nurturing or, or (laughs) massaging or, or, or trying to shake up or offer, uh, more loving ideas and positive ideas and open ideas um, because on facts I'll, I'll lose. People well, are armed. I think facts. I agree so much um, on a lot of reasons. You, you come prepared with them. You want to have them. You want to have good basis yeah. for your thinking and decisions. But a, a part of what I do is, is showing them my heart and showing them yeah. where it is. Even when I uh, agree or disagree, but all I can and have to come back to sometimes is, well, this is how I feel that, you know, I think I would want to be addressed if I was on the other end of this issue, Mm -hmm. how I wanted Mm -hmm. to be thought of, you know, whether we're watching caravans or climate change or any of these issues is like, well, at the heart of it, exactly. Do you think there's more good in the world than bad? And and wouldn't you want to contribute more to one side than the other if you thought of it? And try to just show people where, where mine is, where, where it's appropriate and, you know, where I can. And I think that's a, that's a question that we'll continue to, to work with. And and as we go forward, And my, my my wife said, sorry, I'm interrupting. Yeah, I didn't go for it. My, my, my wife said something really interesting the other day or v- valuable. I think she was, she was like, with every decision, every fiscal decision that the government makes or that the question, an important question to ask about every decision would be how does it affect the poorest people? Mm-hmm. That's it. How does it affect the poorest people? Yeah. It says a lot. Yeah. And we've yeah. said a lot. And I'm grateful that you gave yeah, us yeah. time to talk this morning. Like, it really does mean a lot to me. I, I awesome. extend the invitation if you ever want to be a part of one of my weekly songs. I can always shoot you what I'm working on if you ever right, want Right, right. So, yeah, tell me what, what's, what's the scoop. So, you have a song. Yeah. So, on Danny Hogger, free, yeah, Danny Hogger Free Music Podcast, it's uh, totally free, no subscriptions or anything. You can find it on YouTube or you can find it on, uh, on iTunes. And yeah. I, I sit down at some point during the week, uh, write produce it to the fullest extent that I can during that day or during those couple of days that I have. And I put it yeah. out there and then the end of the year comes, I've got 50 to 60 songs and I'll select the best ones and put them out in a big quantity. So two sides just came out January 2nd and it has awesome. 28 songs on it and wow. some are better than others. And I love some a, a lot. And I think that they yeah. are a representation of what I can do on my own yeah. with no budget yeah. and 
um, yeah. kind of where my heart is musically. So um, yeah, that's awesome. That's what I do, and I really love doing it. And even though the audience has been growing slowly, it's it's something almost at the end of the day, it's for me, and it's my self expression. Yeah, yeah. And Kevin oh, Smith said something like, "You can't ever tell someone their self expression isn't valuable." Um, oh, which yeah. I thought is, is worthwhile and meaningful and I, I love it and it keeps me connected and then I'll go out and you know see you guys and Guster whenever you guys come around and um, you guys keep me fueled and and so I just love everything that you're doing and I thank you for giving me that uh, oh thank you so an much inspiration all the time and Ma- totally, Matthew totally. Uh, not a surf.com and you got shows coming up anything else you want to yeah. you want to plug that you're doing right now um no I well I just put out a single with John Davis from super drag I got you. Um, called uh, We Are in the Wild and We Are Home. And all the proceeds of the single go to Americares, who um, help people with, uh, with uh, medical supplies when they're in, in, in uh, dire need. Um, so it was a real thrill for me because I really love Super Dragon. I'm a real fan of John's. And we, we wrote and recorded a song together in, in Nashville um, in one evening. Awesome. Um, and I was really psyched. And it came out a few days ago. So I'm just oh, cool. plugging that. Yeah. Nice. No, I'll check that out. Cool. I, I always give uh, half my album to uh, Charity Water to help build that's awesome. the water wells overseas. So oh, that's great. You know, yeah. I feel like that's the least I could do. So Matthew, yeah. you've given us a lot, given us a lot of time. I'd love to talk to you again sometime, but I'm just so grateful we had the chance to sit down and communicate. Yeah. And wish you all the best going forward. Thanks so much. Thanks, Dan. All right. All right. Thanks so much for another edition of Danny Hogger Podcast. We'll see you next time. Like, subscribe, and share, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, everybody. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.